I was talking about it last week on the show. People call me up and they go, well, I'm deeply in debt on my car because my other car got totaled. And I went, no, that's not how that works. It's the same kind of a thing. You go through the emotions of a car wreck and your car getting totaled. And the lady that in that particular case, you know, we all do this stuff. And you just have to guard against this. This is what kills us with our finances. Um, but, you know, the typical person that calls me on the air whose car got totaled buys a more expensive car than they were driving before it got totaled. And they use the car getting totaled as the justification to do that, or the rationalization to do that. And so this lady had a $10,000 car. She got a $10,000 check. She owed $7,000, which means she had $3,000 in her pocket. And she went and bought a $20,000 car. Okay? And uh, bought all because of her. But in her mind, she didn't separate the two things. She's, in her mind, it was like, I had to buy a car because my car got totaled and there's just 20000 That's just what I bought. It didn't make a, the distinction that she doubled the amount of cars she was driving as a result of the car wreck. And those are two different things. Yes, you need to replace the car. But in her case, what I would have suggested, she didn't do it, obviously. She'd call me afterwards. But in her case, I would have suggested take the $3,000 and buy a $3,000 car. Move down in car and be debt free in her case. But if you can separate the emotions of the event that has money around it and determine from that then what is the right thing to do why wisdom wise th- th- what is the wise thing to do then that really helps me because I, I fall in the exact same trap that Liz has fallen into you do too the same trap the lady with the car thing we all fall into that if we're not real careful because personal finance is personal and what you drive and where you live and, and you know, my I've had people call me up and say, you know, my mother passed away, and that's why I'm sixty thousand dollars in debt. And I'm like, how did your mother? Did you pay all her bills? How'd you end up sixty thousand dollars in debt? Well, we had to we had to pay for the funeral. What was she, King Tut? I mean, how did you? What do you mean you sixty thousand dollars? Oh no, the funeral wasn't sixty. The funeral was ten. And I went, oh okay, so you're ten thousand dollars in debt because of your mother. You paid for your mother's funeral. What's the other fifty? Oh, well, I just, I, but in their mind, they said, I got $60,000 in debt because of my mother's funeral. And it wasn't your mother's funeral. And not even a sixth of it was the mother's funeral. But you see how our minds work, how we tie that together. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so when you lump these things together in, in your, in your conversation with yourself, that I have and that you have, you need to be careful with that. You go, okay, wait a minute. These are two separate things. And when you break them apart, then you'll make much wiser decisions. And it's not to say that Liz can't move up in house. Uh, It's possible her finances will allow that. Um, But let's say that she's in debt, doesn't have an emergency fund, and she still needs to move because of the potential health problem for her children. Yeah, move, protect your baby. I'm with that. I'd never... Ask my my kids to leave their grandbaby, my grandbabies, in in the situation where I was worried about that. No, get out of there, be done with it. But that doesn't. But don't. But move laterally, laterally. And and you know, it's a it's a really interesting thing. How much do our hopes and our fears? How much do our rationalizations and our justifications, our sense of feeling trapped, versus our sense of being victorious, hopelessness? versus hopeful, selfishness versus selflessness, how these things interweave into, and somehow we can make the dumbest math in the world sound smart in the middle of all that stuff. All of us can. And I, I, I'm, I'm chief. I've got a PhD in DUMB. It's why God makes me teach this stuff every day. I can do the exact same thing. And Again, there is no harm in moving up in car if your car gets totaled. There is no harm in Liz buying a better house. But keep those two decisions separate and don't blame the higher purchase on the emotional event. Blame the higher purchase on, hey, I looked at my money and my finances and I can actually have the money and I can afford it. Oh, then that's an okay, cool deal. Keep them separate and you'll make better decisions.